Welcome back to the John Gets Games playthrough for Marakaibo. At this point, we have played through one out of the four rounds in the game in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description or by clicking the eye up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I really might make mistakes while we are playing through the rest of this complicated game, and that would let me put corrections directly on the screen, which you should be able to see. So uh, definitely turn those on, and let's now jump back into the game. At this point, it is now our turn, and we are now beginning the second out of four rounds in the game. So let's go ahead and start things off by sailing from Havana. So let's focus in on the map, and considering we currently have four cards that all have tobacco on them, I think let's just go a little bit slowly and head over here to Santiago for this turn. Now once we go over here, we can deliver goods to Santiago, and obviously they want tobacco. So that means we can get rid of one of these cards that we don't particularly like. Now, this grocer does cost us extra cards from our hand and would give us a bunch of money if we had the house synergy symbol, but I don't currently see a way that we'd get that, so I think this is going to be the one we discard. After this, we can take one of our ship tokens, and I figure we'll clear this one off. So now when we take village actions, we have a new option where we could take a gold and gain one strength. So we can add this over here, and then we are going to gain a single worker from the supply, and we can now do one village action. So we can add this over here, and it looks like we have four of them, and we could potentially go over here to take one gold and gain a strength, but I think we'll do that later, and instead, for this action, let's go ahead and buy this shipbuilder. As you can see, this is going to cost us eight money, so that means we have just two money left over at this point. Uh, now we can see down here that we would get this synergy token, except we do already have it. And now this is an assistant. We have to take one worker and put it down onto the 10 spot. Now as an action, when we are at the 10 spot, we can now take two money, remove one of our tokens from our ship, and then take two village actions. So that seems pretty powerful to me. So we can add this right over here and then place our assistant over here on 10. So we actually have assistants on nine and 10. Well, at this point, we are now done with our actions. So let's go ahead and draw two more cards. Now, I think we will go random from the top for the first one of these, and that's a village elder. Now this says that whenever someone, even us, stops at a village with one of our assistants, then we would get two gold. So that is certainly interesting. Now for our other draw, I think let's spend one of our coins so that we can take one of these four that are face up here. Now the one that we want is this quest hunter because it's relatively cheap to buy. It's only seven gold and you'll see it adds two to our money income and two more if we have the anchor synergy token and we do indeed have that token. Also, this gives us a compass which would make questing more lucrative to us in the game. So I'm pretty happy to have this card in our hand. Let's now finish things up by drawing a new one from the top of the deck and now the yellow player can go. And they are also going to move once over here into Santiago. They like the idea of discarding this tobacco in order to do a delivery. So they can take a token from their ship, and they've decided to pull this one off here. Next up, they will gain a single worker from the supply, and now they can take one village action. Now it looks like this was the main reason they wanted to do that action, because they want to buy this card, which is another quest hunter. Now that's going to cost them one worker as well as seven money, but they have a two reduction over here. So that's only going to cost them five money, and you'll notice that gives them a third compass, and it's going to increase their money income track by two. So they are now up to 12, and now they can finish out their turn by drawing two more cards because they have a hand limit of six. The first one is going to be random from the top, and for the second one, they would like this card right here, so that is going to cost them one coin. So their turn is over, and we can reveal one more to the card row, and now the green player can go. Well, just like the rest of us, it looks like they are going to stop in Santiago, and they are going to deliver one tobacco. And just like the yellow player, they're going to pull one of their tokens from this line here, so if they do it again, they will gain access to a third combat power. So they'll put this right over here, and then they are going to gain one worker from the supply, and then do a village action, and just like the rest of us, they are going to be buying a card. Well, it looks like the card they want is this one right here, and that is a shipbuilder. Now, we also built a shipbuilder this round, but as you can see, the effect is pretty different. Now, they are going to get one of the saw and axe synergy tokens, so they can add that right over here. And it looks like currently that does not unlock anything for them. Then we can see they, of course, have to pay money for this, so that's going to be 11 minus 1 or 10 money. So they've gone down to just three money total over here, and then this is going to cost one worker, which they just got. 
Now this is an assistant, and this is going to go down into 10, just like uh, the shipbuilder that we just built. And we can see as an effect, this will give them three victory points when they land on it, and then they can move their ship one to three more spaces, and then do another main action after that move. Now, as you can see, location 10 is one away from Maracaibo, so it's likely they are hoping to use that as a combo to land over here and do combat while also getting victory points. At this point, they are now done with their turn, and they have to draw two more cards. And for the first of these, they're going to go random. And for the second one, they are going to spend one coin in order to draw this card here. So their turn is done, and we can reveal another card which means it's now time for us to go, and I figure let's sail 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and stop over here in Kumana to activate our Explorer Assistant. This means we are going to get two money, and then after that, we can do three exploration. Well, we can come down here and see that we could get a point, one money, two money. We could also go down here and get three money and three points, which is good. Or we could head down here and complete this quest. As you can see, we do have two of these maps in our hand. But right now, we only have one compass. So that would be worth two strength and just two money. And I think I'd rather just head down here and take three money and three points. So we now have six money total and seven points. At this point, we are now done with our main action, and we can reserve some cards if we want to, and considering we actually paid money to draw this card last round, I am very confident this is one that we would like to buy. Now, when it comes to these other two, this Privateer Raid does look pretty great as well. Now, it does cost 3 strength and 11 money, but you'll notice down here it gives 4 money income and 4 victory point income if you have the Anchor Synergy token, and we do. So this is a very lucrative card, and I do think we want to try and get this built out at some point. So let's put that right over here. Uh, that means we have two cards out of our four maximum, so let's draw two more. Now we currently have six money, and I don't think I want to spend any of it to buy any of these, so let's just draw a random from the top for both of these. This first one is an Explorer. Uh, we already have one of those, and the second one is going to be an Aristocrat. This just gives the ability of pulling off one token from your board once, but it is worth five points for just 11 money. All right, it's now time for the yellow player to go, and they've decided to sail one, two, three spaces, and then they're going to complete this quest. Now, as you can see, that's going to require discarding two book objects, and they do indeed have these. You may remember they actually paid a money to draw this card at the end of their last turn, and that was specifically to get this book. So these are discarded, and that means they can complete this quest. Well, the first thing they get is one strength for every compass they have, and that is one, two, three compasses, so that's going to give them three strength. And then this symbol matches the same symbol on Maracaibo. That means for completing this quest, they can actually do a battle. So they're going to draw the top card from one of the stacks, and it looks like this one will add plus three strength to the nation that currently has the least cubes out on the board. Well, when we look out here, it appears that Spain and England are tied for the most, and France has no cubes out at all, and the yellow player actually has some influence in the French track already, so they are going to fight for the French. That means they are going to have 4 combat power plus 3, or 7 total. So they can come back to their board, and they have decided to spend 5 of their 7, gaining 2 influence in France, and then they're going to spend 4 more in order to place a French cube down into an empty city. Now, obviously, that is 5 plus 4, or 9, and they only have 7 coming in from this tile, so they're going to spend 2 of their strength to make up the difference. So, they will take 2 influence for the top action, and then another influence for the middle one, and that middle action lets them put this cube down into an empty city. Now, obviously, the cities are locations with these red flags, and it looks like 4 out of the 6 are currently occupied, and they've decided to put this down here into Maracaibo, and as a bonus, that will immediately get them 2 victory points. So they'll go from 0 to 2. Alright, that has finished out their battle action, which of course came from this quest, so that means their turn is coming to an end, and if they wanted to, they could reserve one of these four cards. And they figure they may as well. They have this card which says Pinnace, and as a one-time benefit, when it's built, they will get two points for every compass they have, and considering they already have three compasses, that seems pretty good. It also comes in with four money income, but of course they do have to get this built. Now at this point, they have just three cards, and of course they have a hand limit of six, so that means they have to draw three more. Now they do currently have nine money that they could spend, and they're going to start by going random, so they're going to draw one, then a second one, and for the third card, they're going to spend one coin in order to pick up Mary Reed. Now as you can see, this card can only be bought if the English currently control three locations, and right now there are only two English cubes out on the board. 
This means they might have to wait a bit to get this card bought, or maybe the next time they fight, they'll fight for the English. Now that is a pretty nice card because it gives a compass as well as some victory point and money income. So let's draw one more card over here. All right, it's now time for the green player to go, and they're going to sail one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places and land right over here where they have a ship building assistant. Now, as we saw before on their previous turn, this is going to give them three points immediately and then let them move one to three more spaces and do another action. So they are going to do this. They will then just move one space over here to Maracaibo to do some fighting. But before they do this, of course, they will get three points. So they go from five up to eight. Next up in Maracaibo, they are going to discard one sugar, and that lets them take a token off of their board. And considering they're about to do some attacking, we're not surprised to see them pull this one off. So now they have the ability to do this action down here, which lets them put cubes down into villages, in addition to the second action, which lets you put cubes down into cities. This means they're going to take the top tile, and this is going to add three combat to the nation that currently has the least a number of cubes out in the Caribbean. Now currently that is France, they only have one, while both Spain and England currently have two. Well, before they make this decision, they of course gain two strength because they have two of these sailors. Now that means they're up to two. Now they have to pick one of these countries, and realistically they would rather push England, but this does seem like a pretty good opportunity to start getting French influence, considering both of their opponents are already relatively uh, far up on that track, and that means France is probably going to get pushed a lot throughout the game, and they figure, well, if they have some influence, then they'll get points for that. So they are going to fight for France. This means they have four plus three or seven strength overall, and they've decided to activate all three of these lines for the left-hand side. So that's 2 plus 4 plus 2, or 8. So of course they do have to spend one of their strength in order to make up the difference. So let's focus in over here, and for the 2, they're going to gain one French influence. For this 4, they will get one French influence, and then put a cube down into an empty city. And then for 2 more, they will gain another French influence, so that's 3 total. Plus they can add a French cube down into a village, and they will then get 3 coins for every one of their green assistants in that village, and 1 coin for every one of their opponent's assistants. So they can start by taking the 3 French influence, which actually gets them quite close to the rest of us. In fact, we are all currently scoring at the 2x multiplier spot. Now we can look down here, and they're going to take a French cube, and they can only put this down into, uh, it looks like, Santa Marta, because this is the only empty city left. So once they go down here, that is going to give them one victory point, which is going to take them from seven up to eight. And lastly, they can take a cube and put this down into any one of the villages, and they're definitely going to put it right down here into Caracas. That is because they have one assistant, so that's going to get them three coins, and then we have an assistant, which will give them one. So by placing this right over here, they have just generated four more money. Overall, that seemed pretty good to them, and now they can finish out this action by putting that over there. Now, they do have three cards, and they could reserve some of them if they wanted to. And they will indeed put this commercial expedition out. They uh, paid a money to pick this one up on a previous turn, so they are actively interested in trying to get this one bought. Now they have two more cards left, so they can draw two cards to end their turn. And they've decided to go random for both of them. All right, with green done, it's now time for us to go, and we're just going to move one spot right over here to Caracas, and then activate this shipbuilder assistant. As we can see over here, when we activate this, we will get two coins, so now we are up to eight, and then we can pull one of our tokens off of our board. Now, currently, we don't have anything that we are working on just yet, and when you consider the fact that all of the cities are now full, I do like the idea of increasing our options over here when we do battles in the future. So let's just discard this off of our board for that action, and now we can take two village actions. Well, for one of these actions, I think we certainly want to buy a card, and we currently have two, four, six, eight money total. Well, with eight money, we could definitely afford to buy this quest hunter, and I think that's probably what we're going to want to do. Now, for the first action, I think what we should do is activate this down here. That's going to give us one money, and that'll give us one strength. Now that means we are up to two strength, which is nice considering we need three strength in order to uh, buy this card. And I do think this is one that we will hope to get bought before the end of this round. Now, of course, we could do that again, but instead, let's go ahead and buy this quest hunter. So that is going to cost us seven of our money. That leaves us just two money left over at this point. And then, of course, we do have to spend one of our workers. 
Now, this is going to give us two money income plus two more money income because we do indeed have an anchor. And now when we do quests for the rest of the game, we have another uh, one of these compasses. Of course, we haven't done any quests yet, but because of our career, we are certainly motivated to try and get at least two done. So we're definitely going to keep that in mind. Well, it looks like we haven't bumped up our income yet at all, so we're going to go from 8 up to 12, and everybody is actually tied at that location. All right, that has finished out our action, and I don't think we want to reserve any of these cards, so our turn is over because we are currently at our hand size. So that means the yellow player can go. So yellow is going to start by sailing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots, and they're going to stop in Maracaibo. Once over here, they are going to deliver some sugar, so that's going to take up this other spot over there. And with this action, they're going to pull this token off, so just like the green player, they have the ability to now put cubes into villages. After this, it's now time for them to go into combat, so they can draw the top tile, and this one is going to add three more combat value to the country that is currently the weakest. Now currently, England and Spain both have two cubes, and France has three, so no one country has the least number of cubes. So they now have to decide who they're going to fight for, and they have decided to go with Spain. Now that's going to give them four combat, and they're going to use two of that to gain one influence, and then two more to put a Spanish cube out into one of the empty villages. This means they're going to get two Spanish influence total, and then this cube is going to go down here into Kumana. Now there is a single assistant, and it is not the yellow players, it's somebody else, so that means they will get one coin for that. After that, they are done with their combat actions, so that's going to finish out their main phase of their turn, and now they just have to draw up cards. They have five, and they have a hand size of six, so they have one to draw. So they can look down at these cards, and they've decided to save their money and just take a random one from the top. All right, it's now time for the green player's turn, and after looking at their options on the left-hand side of the map, they have decided they would actually like to hurry this round up, and they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and head all the way to the last spot. Now, of course, they can do a battle or do two exploration, and then both of their opponents will get one more turn before they actually end the round. Uh, now, I'm certainly a bit surprised by that. I was hoping to have a couple more turns before the round ended, but it looks like the green player decided to be hasty. So they can fight or explore, and so far nobody but us has really done much exploring, and the green player decides they would like to fight. So they're going to flip this tile over here, and this is going to lose two combat points for the nation that is currently the strongest out in the Caribbean. Now currently it looks like the French have three cubes, the Spanish have three cubes, and the English have two, so that means no country is strictly in the lead, and that means none will get this penalty. So they can come down here and make a decision for who to fight for. Of course, their two sailors will activate, bringing their strength up to three. Well, after considering their options, they are going to fight for England. Now that's only going to give them three combat, but it will also give them a victory point. Now they've decided for this, they're going to be pretty simple. They're going to spend all three of their strength to add that three to this three to make it six, and that lets them place one of the English cubes out, with which they can displace the French or the Spanish out of one of the cities. So that one point will bring them to nine, and then they've decided to kick the Spanish out of Tortuga, and that means the green player will take three money. So they now have nine money total, and at this point they've decided to activate one of their career goals. We can see they can pull this one off. That says if they have three or four combat tokens, they can take two money or two money and two points. Now at this point, you can see they have four combat tokens, so they can do the better result. That means they are going to get two more points and two more money. So this is going to bring them up to 11 money total. They will, of course, gain this worker. And the two points will bring them up to 11. Now, of course, the last thing that happens is they do gain one English influence when they do that action. So they've now gone up to the fifth spot on that track. All right, they are now done with their main action. But now they've decided to start a project. So they can put this card right over here. And now they only have three cards, which means they can draw another card into their hand. In this case, it looks like they would like to draw one of these face-up cards, and that is going to be this smuggler right here. After that, we have to draw another card here. And this one is pretty interesting. It's a very expensive card at 20 money, but down below you'll notice that it lets you take any of the synergy tokens, and it also gives you four victory point income. All right, it's now our turn, and we can tell that this is our last action of the round, because obviously the green player went all the way to that spot. Now, fortunately for us, if we wanted to, we could sail 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and just barely get over there, and that would let us do a battle, or we could go up twice on the exploration track. 
Now, of course, we could also just head over here to Maracaibo to do a battle, but unfortunately, there are no more resources for us to deliver goods to this port. Well, when you consider the fact that we have two of these herb objects in our hand, I think for our last turn of the round, let's sail one, two, three, four spots over here, and then we can complete our first quest of the game. Obviously, that takes the two herbs, so we can discard those. And then we are going to get two money for every compass we have, plus we will get one worker from the supply. Well, we obviously have two compasses, so that means we are going to get four money for this action, and then the worker will get added to the other two, so we have tons of these workers at this point. We can then flip this over, and that is our first quest, and it is worth noting that if we get just one more quest, then we can complete the weaker version of this career, and if we get two more quests, we will get the stronger version, which also comes in with points. All right, I think that has finished out our action. I don't particularly want to reserve either of these cards into this project spot, so let's now draw two more cards, and I think let's save our money and just draw from the top of the deck. So in this case, we have found Michel de Gramont, and this is a pretty good card, actually. It's got a compass on there, and it can only be played if the French have three locations, which they do. Now, this is a 10-cost card, and we currently have six money, so unfortunately, we will not have enough money to buy this one at the end of the round. Well, we have to draw one more card, and this one is a Master Builder, and this one just costs six money, and we do currently have six money, so I think we are probably going to build this at the end of this round, which is going to give us a nice discount going into the second half of the game. All right, it's now the yellow player's last turn of the round, and they are a bit bummed. They were hoping to do the quest that we just completed, and they have considered just heading over here to the end, but instead they are going to go over here and complete this quest. Now, that is going to cost them one strength, and fortunately for them, they have exactly one strength. Now we can see they will get two money for every compass they have, and that's one, two, three. So that's going to get them six money as well as three victory points. So they've gone up to 15 money total and five victory points. Next up, they're going to do a free career activation. They can pull this worker off because they have two or three quests completed. In this case, they have three. So that means they're going to get the better reward, and that's going to give them two more money, as well as two more victory points. So they go up to seven. Well, that's finished their turn out, and they still have six cards in their hand, so they have nothing to draw. And that means it's time for the green player to go. And just like in the first round of the game, they are going to be ending things. So they're going to head right over here, and green immediately gets three points. So that's going to bring them from 11 up to 14. And now, starting with the green player, each player can buy one card or take two victory points. Well, they currently have 10 money and a discount of one, so they could spend up to 11 if they wanted to, which means they could buy this commercial expedition. Now, what they'd love to do is get an anchor synergy symbol, considering that would unlock a lot of income for them, especially if they got this quest hunter out. But unfortunately, they do not have access to that. So they have decided they'll go ahead and get this built. So we can see that that is going to cost them all of their money, because again, they do have a discount of one from this master builder. Now, there is no immediate effect from this card right here, but in future combat actions, they can now spend one strength to get three money and two points if they have a house synergy token, and they would get a house synergy token if they're able to buy this Conquer Village card right over here. All right, we are next, and we have six money, which is exactly enough for us to buy this Master Builder. So we can discard all of this money, and we now have a discount of one on all future buys for the rest of the game. Lastly, the yellow player can buy, and they've decided to go with Mary Reed. Now that is going to cost them 10 minus 2, or just 8 of their money. And of course they can do this because the English currently own 3 locations, and they have exactly 3 locations out in the Caribbean. Now this is going to give them another compass, and it will give them 2 victory point income and 2 money income. So their money income is up to 14, and their victory point income is up to 2. Next up, yellow did buy a card from their hand, so they can draw one, and they're going to go random from the top. And with that, we're done with card buying, so now it's time for income. Now we can see that we are going to get four points, so that's going to bring us from eight up to twelve, and the yellow player will get two, so that's going to bring them up to nine. Then the yellow player is going to get 14 money, and we are going to get 12 as well as the green player. Moving on, we can clear off all of the brown discs from the board, and it looks like that is going to be five total. And then it's time to clear off the four cards in the row and to draw four more. So let's see what we get. 
Well, over here, this Gravedigger has a pretty interesting ability. It says you get three points every time you displace a cube that's already on the board. Now, over here, this Innkeeper is also interesting. They are an assistant, and they give you three coins when you activate them, and then two more victory points for every assistant that you have anywhere in the Caribbean. All right, next up, we can reveal the third out of the four prestige buildings, and this one is the Citadel. Now that costs 20 money as well as a worker, and we can see down here that this will give players who have bought this two points for every spare worker and strength that they have at the end of the game. Normally, neither of those are worth any points to the players. Next up, it's time to consult the quest card. We can see that at the end of round two, we are going to put a quest down on location seven and eight, but not 15 because that's only for the four player game, and obviously this is a three player game. So this is going to go over here onto 7, and this will go onto 8. Lastly, all of the ships are going to head right back over here to Havana, and it's now time to go into the third round of the game. And just like the previous two rounds of the game, we are going to start things off. So let's now take our turn, although I just realized before we take our turn, we actually need to draw a card. We bought a card from our hand as part of the end of round process, and I forgot to draw one back up. Now, technically, this should have happened before we reset the market, so I'm just going to take a random one to kind of correct that mistake, and it looks like that is going to be a Pioneer. Now, this is an interesting card, considering it would increase our Explorer value by one for the rest of the game. Well, when we look back to our playing area, we already have one of those, so I'm not sure if this one is going to get bought. Uh, the one I'm particularly interested in trying to get purchased soon is going to be this one. Now, France does currently own three different spots out there on the map, and getting another compass going early on in the round does seem like a pretty powerful action for us. All right, we can now start sailing, and one option is we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and activate our explorer to go three times up on the track. Now, if we did that, we would actually be in range to complete this quest, so I think what we should do before we do that is try to get this card bought so that we get another compass so that we get more benefits from the quests that we do. So in that case, I think just like the previous couple rounds, let's stop over here in Santiago, and then we can discard this card for the tobacco, and that lets us do one delivery. Well, I think let's take this off, so that means all of the players have unlocked this third tier, which just increases our flexibility for good things that we can do with future attack actions. So we can add that right over here, and then we're going to get another worker. We have tons of these, and now we can take a village action. Well, as I said before, I think we should buy this card right here. That is going to cost us 10 minus 1 or 9 of our money. So we can get rid of this, and it looks like we have 3 money left over at this point. And now we have added another uh, compass to our area, and we've increased our victory point income by 2 and our money income by 2. So our money is up to 14, and our victory points are up to 6. And at this point, I think we are done with our actions. Now we could put one of these as a project over onto our ship, but I don't think I want to do that. So instead, let's just draw two cards. And for these, I am tempted to pick up this Master Builder, but I think let's save our money instead and just draw two off the top. Well, that's funny, we picked up one anyway, and the other one is a Ruin. Now this costs seven money, and we can look down here, and it says that you can place only one time, one quest from the draw pile onto this card, and then we can fulfill this uh, quest card that's on here as our last village action when we are taking village actions. All right, it's now time for the yellow player's turn, and for the first time in the game, they're going to skip over Santiago. They're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they're going to complete the quest over at St. Kitts. Now this is going to cost two binoculars, and they can reveal those from their hand, and then we can see that this is going to give them two money for every compass they have, and it will give them plus one influence on one of the tracks. Well, they already had a bunch of money over here, and it looks like they're going to get more, because they have one, two, three, four compasses, so that is going to be two times four, or eight more money, so they can bring uh, ten over and put two back. So now they have ten, twenty, thirty-one money at this point, and they can gain one influence. In addition to that, they can put this right over here, and that is their fourth quest, so that's going to give them three points immediately. So they're going to go from nine up to twelve, and then they're going to take a French influence. So they can now finish out their turn by drawing two cards, and even though they can easily afford to buy cards from this face-up row, they've actually decided they want to look at some face-down ones instead, so that's going to finish out their turn. Alright, it's the green player's turn, and they've decided to stop into Santiago. Once here, they are going to deliver some tobacco. And they've decided to do that from right here, so they are just one token away from being able to take the face-up cards without paying money, and that comes with a three-point bonus. 
Next up, they are going to get one worker from the supply, and now they can do a village action. And we're not surprised to see them buy a card. In this case, it looks like they are going to buy this smuggler. That's going to put one of their workers out onto location 19. Uh, technically, that is the smuggler, and that is going to cost them 7 minus 1, or 6 of their money. So they can get rid of this right here, and it looks like they have six money remaining. And we can see down at the bottom, it says when they activate this location 19, if they get rid of three identical goods from their hand, then they can take five coins and then do two village actions. So they can put this out onto 19, which is Camarco, and that is just one space away from the end of the track. Lastly, the smuggler is going to give them this metal synergy token, but currently that does not unlock anything for them. Well, they can now end their turn by drawing two cards, and they're just going to go random from the top of the deck. Alright, it's time for us to go again, and I think we're going to do a familiar pattern to the last round. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then activate our Explorer. So we're going to get two money immediately, and then we can do three exploration actions. And I think we should certainly go one, two, three, and then complete this quest. It's really cheap, we just have to get rid of one worker. And we currently have four of them, so this can go back to the supply, and now we'll get two money for every compass we have. That appears to be one, two, three, so that's six money, plus four more victory points. So we're going to go from 12 up to 16 points. All right, we can now finish out our turn, and if we wanted to, we could reserve one of these cards, and that would let us draw another card. But the thing that we really want is going to be a map, considering we'd love to do this quest over here to get more exploration, and we currently have one map in our hand. Now, the problem is that there are no maps currently showing face up down here, so I think for now, let's just hold off. All right, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they've decided to sail one, two, three, four, five spots, and they are actually going to complete this quest. Uh, we were hoping to make that happen in the future, but they have gone there first. Now, they have decided to sail right by Maracaibo, so they will not be doing this battle action, but they've decided this is going to be better for them. Now, as you can see, they do have to get rid of two maps, and considering they have six cards in their hand, they were able to relatively easily make this happen. So they can show both of those right there. And now they are going to get one point for every compass they have, and they will then go up twice on the exploration track. Well, they continue to have one, two, three, four compasses. So that's going to be four points, plus two more points for putting the quest down right over here. Which means they're going to get six points, which brings them into the lead at 18 but they're not done yet because then they're going to move up twice on the exploration track and that's going to give them two more points. So this brings them to 20 points and that was a very strong turn for them. Well, they can now finish out their turn by drawing two cards. They're going to go one from the top of the deck and then spend one money to pick up this governor. After that, we can draw another card, and this is a patron. This is a pretty simple card. It's got a very good uh, conversion rate between money and points, and it also, one time, bumps your influence once in a single nation. All right, it's now the green player's turn, and they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and when they land in the spot, they are going to activate their shipbuilder right down here. Now remember, that gives them three points immediately, and then lets them move one to three spots. So they are going to move once over here to Maracaibo, and they can then do another main action. Now before they get there, they of course have to take three points, which will bring them up to 17. So they can now do their action in Maracaibo, and they're going to start by delivering one sugar. With this, they're going to clear that token off, so now they can take the face-up cards for no money, and they immediately get three more points. So they are going to go from 17 up to 20, so they've now tied with the yellow player, and then they are going to do a battle, so that means they can take the top token, and this one does not have a modifier on the top, and it looks like there is four combat for the French, then there is six for the Spanish, but they'd have to pay two money, and then four for the English. Well, the first thing that happens is they are going to gain two strength, so they have to decide between these options, and they're going to keep pushing the English. Now that gives them four combat, and they are not going to spend their extra strength right here. Now what they've decided to do is spend one combat to activate their commercial expedition. Now that is going to give them three money immediately, and they would also get two victory points if they happen to have the house synergy token, but they don't quite have that yet. They have a conquer village card over here, which would give them that action, but it's not quite in their possession. So they can take the three coins for the single combat, and then they have three more combat actions left, and they're just going to use two of them to gain one influence for England. 
So they'll go up to this six spot, and that means they are now at the three multiplier for the endgame points showing up down here for England. Well, you know, at this point, they have spent three out of the four, and they are now rethinking things a little bit, and they are indeed going to get rid of this worker right here to add one strength so that they can leave these two right up here, which means they can add that one to the one remainder, which will let them do this action. They've decided they would like to do that as well. So that means they can put one English cube down, and that is going to give them another English influence. Now, of course, this goes down into an empty village, and they're definitely going to put it over here in Camarco because they have an assistant there. Now, remember, with this action, you get three money for every one of your assistants in that area, so the green player will get three money with this action. In addition to that, they will, of course, gain one more influence for England. Next up, they've decided they'd like to fill this spot in with a new project, and that's going to be this governor card here. Now at this point, they can draw two more cards at the end of their turn, and they don't have to pay to take the face-up cards. And in this case, they have decided to take this Master Builder as well as this Patron. Alright, they can now finish their turn by revealing two new cards. Here is a Conquer Village card, and there is an Explorer. Okay, this means it's now our turn, and I think we are going to continue to be a slow boat, and we're going to head right over here to do the same 1-2 combo that we did last round. Now this spot right here has our shipbuilder assistant, and that lets us take two money, then remove one token from a boat, and then do two village actions. So that two money is going to bring us up to 13 total, and then we can remove one of these tokens, and we're currently not working on any of these stacks. Now I do kind of like the idea of being able to draw cards that are face up without having to pay money, but I also like the idea of just having a bigger hand size. Now, in addition to that, we could go for this one. That would lower the threshold for extra village actions, but so far, we've been really prioritizing activating our assistance. Now, another option is we could start working on this because we cleared this spot up. You see that arrow there? Now, that would unlock another village action option, which would let us get rid of three identical types of goods to get two money and two victory points. Now, that does seem good, but I think that's ideal if you have a bigger hand size. So I think let's go ahead and pull this one off. This also comes with three points, which is certainly an incentive. Well, lastly, we have two village actions, and I think we really want to get this privateer raid bought, but of course, that's going to cost us three strength. So for one of those two village actions, let's activate this. That'll give us one strength as well as one money. And now with the other action, we can buy this for, it looks like, 11 money minus one for our master builder. I can put this person right back over there. Uh, so that means we have to spend 10 of our money. So we have four money left over. We also have to spend three strength. And now we are going to gain four income for money and four victory point income because we already have this anchor synergy token. Well, this is going to put us way in the lead on both of the tracks. We're up to 18 money. And then over here, we jump up to 10 points at the end of the round. All right, we have now finished out our turn, and we could start projects if we want to, but if I'm being honest, I'm not super crazy about these cards. I suppose this Master Builder would be a nice one to get built, so yeah, let's put this one out there and then draw one card from the market. So we can pick up one of these for one money, and this Innkeeper is somewhat interesting because we already have two assistants, so that would be a third assistant, so when activating, we would get two times three or six points plus three money. Now, we are approaching the fourth round of the game. We would only activate this once, so that would be six points once, and I feel like I would rather try to dig for something that matches up with either the Saw and Axe synergy that we have or the Anchor synergy. So let's draw the top card, and this is an Innkeeper. Okay, well, we ended up getting one anyway. All right, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they're going to move one spot right over here to then activate Port Royal. Now, while over here, they can discard a Corn to do delivery. And they are indeed going to do that. After this, they have to pull a token off of their board. And they're going to go with this one here. So they are looking to lower their threshold for getting more village actions. Now, that's probably because they're making a lot of money. So the more village actions they have, the more opportunities they have to buy cards. So they can add that right over there and then do two exploration actions. In this case, that's going to bring them right over there. And that lets them pull off another token from their board. Well, we're not surprised to see them pull this one off right here. So now, if they move two or more spaces, they get two village actions, and five or more spaces gets them three village actions. All right, they are now done with their turn, but it looks like they do have to draw one card. And they've decided just to go random from the top of the deck. 
Okay, it's now the green player's turn, and they're going to sail one, two, three, four, five, and they're going to stop in Camarco, where they have their smuggler. Now, they're going to activate the smuggler, and in order to do that, they have to get rid of three identical goods. Now, in this case, it looks like they happen to have three tobacco, so they can discard these, two of which I believe they drew in their last turn. And now they get to take five coins, and then they can do two village actions. So they've now gone up to 17 money total. And now for their first action, they are going to activate this ability, which lets them discard their entire hand to take two money. So that means they discard their entire hand of one card. Uh, remember, you have to discard at least one card to make this work. And that's going to give them two money, which brings them up to 19. And that is exactly what they need when they use their Master Builder to buy this Governor. They normally cost 20 minus 1 is 19. So they can spend all of this money right here. The Governor is going to be worth 5 points to them at the end of the game. And right now, it's going to increase their Victory Point income by 4. And they can take any Synergy token of their choice. So their victory point income is now at four, and then the token that they have decided to take is going to be an anchor. Now the reason for this is because they have two sailors that will both give them two more money income if they have an anchor. So that has increased their money income by four. So they'll go from 12 up to 16. Well, they are now done with their actions, so they can draw cards, and they have no cards right now. Also, they do not have to spend any money to pick up these face-up cards, and they've decided to start things off by taking a random card from the top. Then, for their other three draws, they're going to take this Gravedigger, this Explorer, and the Innkeeper. So that means we have to draw three more cards for this supply here. It looks like that's going to be the Merchant. Now, this gives you the ability to do a new type of village action, but it must be your final village action of a turn. And it says you can discard two identical goods to take four money. So that's really quite powerful. But of course, since you do that for your last action, you cannot spend that money to then buy a card. Now, this one is the Pinnace, and this gives you one point for every one of the combat tokens that you've taken in the game. And it also gives four money income. And lastly, we have the Grocer, which gives some money and victory point income and costs three identical goods as an additional payment. All right, it's now our turn, and we can tell that this is definitely going to be our second to last action of the round uh, because we can see that the green player will be forced to go here on their next turn. So I think one of the actions that we probably want to do is to visit Maracaibo. At this point, we've only done two combat so far, and that means our overall influence on the tracks is not very good. So let's head right over here, and we do indeed have a sugar in our hand. So let's discard that card in order to do a delivery. With this, I figure we'll pull that token off, so we immediately get three points, and now we can draw face-up cards without paying money. So three points will bring us up to 19. So we can now do combat and draw the top tile. It looks like this one does not give any bonuses or penalties. So we can see that if we fought for the French, we'd have four combat. For the Spanish, we'd have five. And for the English, we would have two combat, plus we'd get two extra money. Now, I would like to get money, and I think the best way for us to do that is to oust the English from this location right here to take that four money. Now, for that, I think let's fight for the Spanish so that we have five combat value. And then, of course, we would need a sixth combat to pull this off. We don't have any strength, but we do have a lot of workers, so we can get rid of one of them for that last combat. So now we have six, so we can now do the action. So let's take a Spanish cube, and we can get rid of this English cube. That's going to be removed from play. We will now get four money, and of course, we gain one Spanish influence. All right, we gain four money overall, and that's going to finish out the action. It looks like we have three cards currently, and we could draw new cards face up without paying a penalty. Now, we could also put one of these into the reserve if we wanted to, but I don't think we necessarily need to at this point. So let's draw another card, and we do know that there is still a quest out there on the board for the next round that requires two maps. Now we have one map, and there is a map over here, so let's just draw this into our hand so that we are setting ourselves up to be able to do that quest in the next round. So let's draw another card from the top, and this is a Pioneer. All right, it's now time for the yellow player to go, and if they wanted to, they could go one, two, three, four, and end the round, uh, but they've decided instead to go one, two, and then do village actions. Now, this means the green player is once again going to be ending the round. Uh, not every time you play will you have the same player ending the round, but that's just what we've seen so far in this game. But either way, I'm getting ahead of myself. The yellow player can now do their village actions, and they moved twice. 
and this means they can take two village actions because, of course, they unlocked this ability, which lowered their thresholds. Now, they currently have 30 money, and they've decided they're going to spend both of these village actions buying cards. Well, after looking over their options, they're going to buy these two cards right here. Now, they have a discount of 2 for both of them, so that's 16 minus 2 or 14, and 7 minus 2 or 5. So that means, all told, this is going to cost them 19 of their money. And then that's going to put both of these in play. Now we can look down here and see that this harbor is going to give them one Anchor Synergy token. So they can add this right over here. And then it looks like down here, this is going to give them two of their money income if they have the Anchor, and they do, plus two more money. Plus down here, you can see they have another Anchor. So that is two more money again. So overall, they have just generated six money income by taking these two cards. So they'll go from 14 up to 20 on that track. All right, they are now done with their main action, and they are going to start a project with this governor here. So now they can finish out their turn by drawing one card. Well, after considering these options, they are just going to take a random one from the top of the deck. All right, it's the green player's turn, and for the third time in the game, they are going to start the end of the round. When they go right over here, they can either explore or do combat, and it looks like they are going to continue pushing combat. So they're going to draw this tile, and it looks like that does not have a benefit or penalty. It says they would get two money and two combat for fighting for the French. They would get six combat, but have to spend two money to fight for Spain. And lastly, they could get four combat to fight for England. Well, first things first, they are going to get two strength from their two sailors. And then we're not too surprised to see them fight for England. So far, they are the only ones pushing England as a nation, and they're getting pretty high up on that track. So this means they have four strength right away, and they are going to start by activating their commercial expedition. Now this is going to give them three money, and it's going to cost them one of their strength, so they're down to three. And unfortunately for them, they still do not have the house synergy token, so they will not get two extra points. So they now have three money, and they also have three combat left, and they are going to spend two of that to increase their influence with England once. So this will bring them to the eighth spot on that track. And now they have one combat left, and they'll add to that a single strength from their track. So they are now at two combat, which will let them put down a cube into an empty village. Now they would get money if that village had any assistance, but currently it looks like all of the assistants are in villages with cubes already. So they're just going to be putting a cube down and gaining one more influence for England. And they've decided to put this over here in Tortuga for no other reason than to just keep these cubes close so that it's easy to see. Now, of course, they gain one influence, bringing them to the ninth spot on that track, which is also the 4x multiplier. Now, currently, England is showing three of these points face up, so they have a minimum of three times four or 12 points from that. And that could be even more if England ends up being the first or second place nation out on the map. Now, at the moment, they currently are in first, but that could definitely change. All right, that has finished out this combat action, and now as a free career action, they are going to bring this worker off because they have uh, nine influence in one nation. Now, they could have done this with just six influence, but they did get to nine with England exactly, so that's going to give them three victory points as well as three money, and they gain another worker. So three points will bring them from 20 up to 23, and three money is going to bring them up to six. Now, at this point, they have decided they would like to start another project. And they're going to do that with this innkeeper here. Well, they can now finish out their turn by drawing a card. And they do have the ability to take one of these for free. And we're not too surprised to see them take this pinnace. That will give them one point for every combat token they have. And currently, it looks like they've already done six combats. And they're hoping to probably do two more in the next round. So they are trying to make this a very efficient uh, money to victory point card later on in the final round of the game. So let's now draw another card, and this is a Carpenter. Okay, we can now take our final action of the round. And if we wanted to do exploration, I think we would probably stop at Port Royal instead of going all the way to the end, because over here we could discard this card, because it has a corn, to pull off another one of the tokens from our ship. Now, if we instead want to do battle, then we should go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and activate this spot right over here. Now, at this point, our influence is still not that great on these tracks, so I think maybe we should probably push that instead of going harder on the exploration track for the moment. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we can sail right over here, and then when we do combat, it looks like if we fight for the strongest nation, we will lose two uh, combat uh, points. And currently, England is the strongest with four cubes on the board. It looks like France has three, and Spain has three. So we can look over here, and we're definitely not going to fight for England. Uh, if we did, I suppose we would get one English influence, but we would have two minus two or zero combat points. Now, if we fight for Spain, we'd have four, and France would give us five combat. And when you consider the fact that all of us are getting points right now for France, and currently the green player hasn't done anything with Spain, I think let's go ahead and fight for Spain. That is one less combat point, but I think that's okay. We can use this four combat points to do two up here to gain one influence for Spain, and then two down here to place one Spanish cube out onto an empty village, and of course gain another Spanish influence. So let's put that cube out, and currently there are no spots that have assistance that don't already have cubes, so we'll just put this one over here in Santa Marta. All right, that has finished our last action of the round, and we currently have a full hand, so that means the yellow player can go. Well, no one is surprised to see them sail right over here, and then when they get to this spot, they have decided to go twice on the exploration track. So that's going to let them go 1, 2, and then they're going to claim this quest, although as soon as they cross this line right here, they are going to gain 3 influence in a single nation. Well, they are currently in the lead on the French track and doing pretty well on the Spanish track, but it looks like they've decided to go up 3 times on the English track. That gets them all the way to the 2x multiplier, so just like that, they are already getting 2 times 3, or 6 points, based off of all of the work that the green player has done so far. Next up, they are going to complete this quest, and that requires them to get rid of two maps. So they can look to their hand of cards, and they do indeed have those maps right here. So that means they are going to get two coins for every compass they have, and that's still four, so that's going to be eight coins, plus they are going to gain two strength. So that's going to bring them up to here, and of course when they complete this, that is going to give them two more victory points. So let's give them their money first, and then they can take those two points. So they go up to 22. Now the last thing they can do is draw cards, and they're going to draw one from the top, and then they're going to take another one from the top of the deck. That's going to finish out their turn. This means it's now the green player's turn, and for the third time in the game, they are the ones to end the round. So that's going to give them three points, bringing them up to 26. And now starting with the green player, each person can buy one card. Of course, instead of buying a card, they could take two points, but I think everyone's going to be buying and it looks like the green player is going to go with the innkeeper. Now that is going to cost them 6 minus 1, or 5 of their money, so they have just 1 money left over. And then the innkeeper is also going to cost them their single worker. Now that worker is going to go out onto the 8 location as the innkeeper, and if they pass over that spot, they of course just get 2 points, but if they activate it, they will get 2 points for every assistant they have, and they currently have 3. Now they would also get 3 money for doing that, so they're certainly going to consider that spot next round. So the worker will head over here onto Martinique. And now it's time for us to make a potential purchase. It looks like we have five, six, seven, eight money and a discount of one. So we can buy something that costs up to nine money. So realistically, we can buy the ruins, this innkeeper, this pioneer, or that master builder. Now the pioneer would give us two income, which would be nice. We do not currently have the house to increase that income for money by one but they would increase our exploration ability by one for every time we do that for the rest of the game. Now, I think it's very likely we are going to be activating our explorer down here at least one more time in the last round for three points. So we should probably look at the track and see what three plus one or four movement would get us. So we could go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Now that is three money and three points, which is quite good. Although if we went here for one point, we would be much closer to crossing the third goalpost. Well, unfortunately, from that position, we would need to go one, two, three, four more spaces. And the standard spots on the board, like this one right here, only let you go two. So add one to that, you get three, which leaves you right over here. And five money is certainly nice, but going over this threshold would be great because that would get us four extra points. And of course, remember, we have this career card. Now, we haven't completed this one down here. And if we pull this off, once we cross the third level, we get four more points. So essentially, crossing this would get us 8 points. Now I suppose if we don't get that Pioneer, then our Explorer would bring us 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3. Uh, that's pretty nice because it would give us 1 influence, and this spot would leave us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps away. And without the extra benefit, that would be actually 3 bumps at 2 each instead of 2. 
So the only way I realistically see us crossing this line is by buying that Pioneer. Well, I think I have talked myself into it. So we can spend seven minus one or six of our money. That's gonna leave us two left over. And we have increased our exploration value by one. And we can now increase our money income by two as well. So that'll bring us from 18 up to 20. Lastly, there is the yellow player and they've decided to buy their governor. Now they have a discount of two, so that's gonna cost 20 minus two or 18. We can see over here that they do indeed have that. They could spend all of this and they have just one money left over actually. So this governor will come into play and it's worth five points at the end of the game. It's also going to increase their victory point income by four immediately and they can take any synergy token of their choice and they've decided to go with the saw and ax. So they can look down here and that's gonna unlock four more victory point income for them. So they're gonna gain four plus four or eight, which brings them from two all the way up to 10. And that huge income lead that I thought we had just evaporated at least in comparison to the yellow player. All right, our purchases are done. So it's now time for income. And I figure we can start with victory points. Now we are going to get 10, which will bring us from 19 up to 29. The yellow player, unfortunately, will also get 10, which brings them from 22 up to 32. After that, the green player will get four, so they are gonna go from 26 up to 30, and now it's time for our money income. So the green player is going to get 16 money, and then we are gonna get 20, as well as the yellow player. All right, we can move the ship on, and now we have to remove all of these wooden tokens from the board. And then it's time to remove the four face-up cards and draw new ones. So these are gone, and the draw deck is getting very small. In fact, there are exactly four cards in it, so we can reveal all of those. Uh, that's interesting. This cartographer actually gives you an ongoing permanent map, so whenever you would need to discard a map, you could discard one less. Now at this point, I figure let's go ahead and shuffle up the discard pile, and now we can move on. So the next thing that happened is the reveal of the final prestige building. So far, nobody has bought any of these, but I think this is likely to change in the final round of the game. Obviously, they are very expensive, and they give a variety of really good endgame victory points. In particular, I think the yellow player is probably going to go after this one, considering they have already completed six quests, and it gives two points per quest. Now, this new one is the Abbey, and this one, ooh, gives four points per barrier that you have passed. Now, we kind of made a decision to try and push to go through that third and final barrier, so this might be the one that we are going to target before the end of the game. All right, we can now add quests to the board for the final time in the game. We can look down here and see that we have to add it to 16 and 10, but not to 12 because that's only for the four-player game. So this one will go to 16, and this one will head on to 10, which is already a pretty busy spot on the board. All right, the last thing we have to do is add all of the ships back over here to Havana, and we can now start the fourth round of the game, and for the fourth time in the game, we actually get to go because the green player once again ended the round. So we can start by sailing, and I think we want to bypass Santiago this turn. The reason for that is because we have been saving a couple of maps, so now we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and stop over here in Martinique to complete this quest. Now, obviously, this does cost two maps, and we can look in here, and we have two maps right there. So those cards will be discarded, and then it looks like this quest is going to give us two money for every compass we have. Well, that's one, two, three, so that's going to be six money, plus one influence on a nation track of our choice. So let's start with the six money. And then when it comes to nation tracks, I kind of feel like maybe we should go up once on England. We can see that there's already three points unlocked here, and there might be more, so that would be a minimum of a three-point play. Now, instead, I suppose we could bump up one of these, like this one for Spain would get us to the 3x spot, and we're currently at 2x, so that would also be a three-point play overall. I suppose Spain is probably the better move, especially considering that gets us closer to this area where the multipliers get closer together. So yeah, we'll go up there on Spain. After this, let's now take a career-free action. You'll see we have three quests, and that is the harder one to complete. So that's going to get us two victory points as well as two more money. Oh, and we also get a worker. So those points will bring us up to 31. All right, let's now finish out our turn by drawing two more cards. And I don't think I'm particularly interested in any of these. So let's just go random from the top. And, ooh, we found a pioneer. Now that is interesting. That gives us another plus one, and that really might make our lives easier. 
Let's go ahead and draw random again, and there's a quest hunter. I suppose getting more compasses is nice, but probably not at this point in the game. Alright, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to sail right over here to Porta Plata. Now once they land here, they are going to discard a tobacco, which they do indeed have in hand. And then of course they have to take a token from their board, and they've decided to go with this one here. Now they can take this off because they have one, two, three, four of these other unlocks done. As you can see right there, that is the threshold. Now this spot right here will give them the ability to get three explorations, or four money and four points, or they can move one influence token up to the next noble rank. Now the other option over here is also pretty interesting. If this is cleared, then that gives you a new village action, where if the village you are taking actions in is currently empty of cubes, you can then take a cube from any nation and put it into that village. You then get one money and one influence in that nation as well. So that can certainly be quite powerful, but at this point the yellow player decides they're going to go with this one here. So that's going to go right down over there, and now they're going to spend two strength to gain one influence and six more money. Well, they just so happen to have two strength, it looks like they were planning for that. So now they can take the six money and one influence. Well, in this case, they're going to go up once on the Spanish track. Alright, Yellow is done with their main actions, and they've decided they want to start two projects. This first one is an expedition, which is very expensive, 20 money and two workers. But it looks like it would give four plus four or eight more income for them, considering they already have the two synergy tokens that work for that. So that is a very good card for them, and they're also going to start a project with a harbor. This leaves them with just three cards, so they can now draw three more cards at the end of their turn. And they've decided to go random for all three of them. Okay, it's the green player's turn, and it looks like they're going to skip over Santiago and head over to Porto Plata. They were planning on doing this already, and they're a bit bummed that Yellow got in there first to do this delivery, but they still feel like this is going to be worth it to them. So that's going to cost them two strength to gain six money and one influence. Well, they had three strength, so now they go down to one, and now they get six money. And then one influence will bring them to the 10th spot on this track, which is another noble rank. So they just went from 4x to 5x for the English victory points at the end of the game. Now I suppose it's worth noting that if you ever gain influence in a track, but you're at the end, you just get two points for each one of those influence. Alright, next up they're going to do a free start a project action by putting this pinnace right over here, and now they can end their turn by drawing one card. Well, they can pick up a card for free, and they've decided to take this pinnace here. They already have three of the Synergy tokens, and they would get a fourth if they took one of those Prestige buildings to get a crown, so they feel like this one might well be worth it to them. So let's refill this spot in, and there is uh, Jacot de la Haye, I'm sure that's not how that's pronounced, uh, that one as Exploration, as well as Victory Point and Money Income. Now this can only go out if there are three French cubes on the map, and currently that is the case. All right, it's now our turn, and for the last couple rounds, we've stopped over here at Kumana in order to activate our Explorer, which gives us three bumps up on this track. That also gives us two money, which is nice, but now I'm thinking maybe we should bypass that in order to go to Caracas in order to take this quest. That gives plus three exploration track movement, just like our Explorer, plus this would be our fourth quest, which means it would be worth uh, three more points. Also, it would give us two coins for every compass we have, which is three, so that comes with six money, and we have a lot of workers. And lastly, remember, every time you don't use one of your assistants, you just get two points. So I think let's go right over here, and we have bypassed both assistants because we're not activating this one either, so that is two plus two, or four points immediately before we even take this action. So we're going to go from 31 up to 35. Next up, we can do this quest. We, of course, have to get rid of one of our numerous workers. We can then put this right over here, and that's going to get us two, four, six money from the bank. And then, when we flip this over, you'll notice it also gets us three points. Now, in addition to that, we get three exploration, but let's take the points first. So we can now go up to 38. All right, it's now time to explore, and remember, we have plus one because of our pioneer. So that lets us go one, two, three, four, and this spot is going to get us one victory point, plus we are the first player to cross this double line, so that's going to get us four more points. So we can take five more points with this move. Well, this has been a great turn for us. We can now go from 38 up to 43. Okay, the next thing to do is to, I think, start some projects so that we can draw cards. Let's definitely put this Pioneer over there, 
and then I don't think this innkeeper is going to end up being bought. Uh, this aristocrat is a pretty good victory point conversion ratio though. So let's just put this out over here. We probably won't buy this one either, but that just frees up some room for us to draw some more cards and see some more options. Well, I think let's start by drawing this card right here. Uh, that gives plus one to exploration. So I think maybe we will buy this card instead of this pioneer that we just started as a project. That's fine overall. Uh, this will give us more points as income, which is certainly a good thing. It is a little bit more expensive, I suppose, but I think I like having this option. Now we can draw one more card. And when you consider the fact that this harbor could give us four plus two or six more victory point income, uh, I think this is a good one for us to grab. Uh, we don't have the crown just yet, but I'm pretty sure we are going to have a crown by the end of the game. I do think we want to build one of those prestige buildings. So let's add this into our hand. And now we can finish things off by drawing two more cards. Uh, this one right here is Woods Rogers. And that says that you get plus one strength when you do combat. After that, we can see this one, and that's a Vice Admiral. This is an assistant going onto the 19th spot. And when you activate this, you get one point for every combat token that you have, and you get three village actions. This also gives a medal over here, and this would be amazing for the green player, although I think at this point, it might be too late for them to make that happen. All right, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they're going to sail one, two, three, four, five, six places, and go to Maracaibo. Now, once they are here, they are going to deliver some sugar, which is going to be from this captain card that they have. So they can take a token from their board, and they're going to take this one here. Now that gives them one of these three options, and they've decided to move one of their influence tokens up to the next noble track. Now after looking at their options, they've decided to go up all the way to here, so that's three bumps effectively on the English track. They could have gotten two bumps on the Spanish track or three on France, and they considered the French track here, but they decided ultimately that this maybe makes more sense. They think the green player is very motivated to get more of these white cubes out, and they'd like to get some points from the green player's endeavors. Now the next thing the yellow player wants to do is two of these free career actions. Now this first one is going to give them three money. They can do it because they've crossed the first of the exploration thresholds. They don't feel like they're going to make it to the second. And then this second one right here is going to give them four money because they have five unlocks over here on their board and they don't think they're going to get to seven. So that's going to be four plus three or seven money. Plus once you have completed all of your career goals, you can flip this card over. Now when you do that, you get two more money, so that means they're getting nine money, plus they get two victory points, and they can flip this over, and they are appointed admiral. Now there is no in-game benefit of this, it just makes your ship look more impressive. So they can take their nine money, and then the two points, which will get them to 34. All right, it's now time for them to do a battle in Maracaibo so they can flip over this tile. And it looks like the country that is currently the strongest is going to lose two combat points. So they can look out to the Caribbean, and it looks like England has one, two, three, four cubes out. Spain has one, two, three, four, and France has one, two, three. So that means Spain and England are tied, so neither of them have a strict majority, so no one is going to take this penalty. Now their options are five French combat points, four Spanish combat points, or three English ones, but that also comes along with one point. Well, after considering those options, they are going to fight for the French. So that gives them five combat points, and they are going to get rid of one of their workers to add one strength immediately. So now they can do this line here, which lets them uh, put a French cube down and get rid of another cube, and they will then also get a French influence. So that French influence will bring them up to seven, and then they have decided to remove this Spanish cube from Santiago, and that's going to give the yellow player four money. So they can add this right over here, and they do have four more of these workers, but they've decided to keep them, so that's going to finish out this combat action for them. At this point, it's now time for them to draw a single card, and they've decided to simply take one from the top of the deck. Okay, it's now the green player's turn, and they're going to go one, two, three spots and stop in Martinique. Now, while they're here, they're going to activate the Innkeeper Assistant ability. This is going to give them three money, as well as two points for every assistant they have, no matter where this is. And they currently have three assistants. So that's going to be six points and three money. Well, the six points will bring them up to 36. And then they can take their three money, and that's finished out their turn. They are currently at their hand limit. All right, it's now our turn, and I think we'll go right over here to Maracaibo. So far, everyone's going a little bit slow. The green player is back over there. Now, once we go here, we can deliver this sugar in order to pull off one token from our board. 
And I think we'll definitely take this one, considering we now have one, two, three, four unlocked. So that does give us access to this area. All three of these options are quite good, and I like how that leaves us really flexible. Next up, it's time to fight, so we can draw a tile, and it looks like uh, if we fight for the country that's doing the worst, we will get plus three combat. Well, currently the English have one, two, three, four cubes out, the Spanish have one, two, three, and the French have one, two, three, four. So that means that the Spanish are doing the worst. Now, actually, the Spanish track is best for us, so I think this is going to work out pretty well. Now, if we fight for the Spanish, unfortunately, their base combat is two, but we'd have two plus three or five plus two more money, which is pretty good. So we can start by taking two money, and we have a lot of money at this point. We do want to find a way to spend all this before the round is over, I think. Now, at this point, we have five combat, and I think I want to knock the English down a peg. We currently aren't getting any points for those, and both of our opponents are. So let's take this five and get rid of a worker to make that six which will give us one Spanish influence, and we can now kick out the English. Now, part of me kind of wants points, but if we want to hit the English, it's going to have to be in, looks like, uh, Puerto Plata or Santo Domingo. So let's go to Puerto Plata, where we get three more money. So this brings us up to 41 money, which is a ton. Although, if we start buying those prestige buildings, then our money is going to go away pretty quickly. Now, unfortunately, all prestige buildings do cost a worker, and we only have one of them left. Now, I suppose that's not that big of a deal, considering we are going to pick up one more worker when we complete this spot on our career board. So I think that might actually be our path, but we'll see what our options are like in the next couple turns. All right, let's now finish out our turn by drawing a card, and none of these are particularly interesting to me. So let's take a random one from the top, and it's a mercenary. Now, that is an assistant that goes on space 19 that gets you a worker, lets you pull off a token, and do one of the village actions. All right, the yellow player is now up, and they've decided to go one, two, three, four spaces, and they are then going to complete this quest. Now that is going to take two books, and they do indeed have that, as you can see right over here. So now they are going to get two money for every compass they have, which is still four, so that's going to be eight money, and then they will gain one influence on a track. In addition to that, they will also get two more points for completing this quest. So they are now tied with the green player at 36, and then they're going to gain one French influence. Okay, they can finish out their turn now by drawing cards, and they're just going to go random from the top of the deck. All right, the green player can now go, and they're going to move their ship twice over to Caracas. Once they're over here, they have decided to activate their shipbuilder. This will give them three victory points, and then give them the ability to move one to three spaces. So they are going to head right over here to Maracaibo, just like the last couple rounds. And then they take three points, which brings them up to 39. Once in Maracaibo, they cannot do a delivery because they are a bit slow, but they can do some combat, so they can flip over this tile. And it looks like if they fight for the strongest nation, they will lose two combat points. Well, currently it looks like England has one, two, three cubes out. France has one, two, three, four. And then Spain has one, two, three, four. So there is no strict strongest nation, so there is no penalty. And if they fight for France, they have three combat plus one money. If they fight for Spain, they get three combat plus a point. And if they fight for England, they get six combat, but they do lose two money. Well, before they make a decision, they of course gain two strength, and then they have decided they're going to fight for England. They've been doing that a lot this game so far, and they're going to keep it up. Now, this is going to cost them two money, and then we can see that they have six combat plus a potential three more from their strength track. Well, they're going to start by spending one of their six in order to activate their commercial expedition. That way, they will get three money, but once again, they still were not able to get this house synergy token going to get extra points. They are definitely bummed that that has not happened yet for them. So they'll just take three money, and now they have five combat left over. Well, we're not surprised to see they've decided to spend one strength to make that six combat, and that will let them displace one cube out on the board in one of the cities. Now, realistically, they would love to displace one of the Spanish cities, considering they're currently not getting any points for Spain. But they would also like to get points, and it looks like France is in both of the victory point cities. Now, if they wanted to, they could just go over here, and that would give them three money. They're not super sure they need the money at this point in the game anymore, but they're going to go for it anyway, mostly so that they can smack Spain down, so that Spain is less likely to get these bonus points for the multiplier. So they can take the three money from that spot and then gain one English influence. 
All right, they've now spent all of their combat, but they do have two strength over here, and they've decided to spend both of those to get one more English influence. So they've made it all the way to the very end of that track, and their multiplier is now six. So at a minimum, they have six times three, or 18 points coming in from this. If another one of these cubes goes away, then that would add six more points to their score. Now, in addition to that, if England is in the best position or second best position, then that is even more points coming their way. All right, that has finished out this combat, and that has finished out their turn, because they don't have any more cards to draw. All right, it's now our turn, and when I look at our current situation, I think the best thing for us to do to kind of close out the game is to get two prestige buildings built, and then probably do one more combat. Now, we do, of course, need to cross the uh, third goalpost on the exploration track, and I think the best way to do that for us is probably through this token right down here. That would give us three plus one from our uh, pioneer over here, so that would get us across that threshold. I kind of forgot this option was here, and that means we would not have to buy this pioneer or this card right over here to get that extra bonus. That would also free us up to be able to do another combat, which could probably be worth more points as we get better uh, modifiers on the influence track. So we uh, can look over here and see that we realistically are only planning on buying two more cards for the rest of the game. And one of them is going to come as a free action from the end of round spot. So I think for this turn, let's go ahead and go 1-2 and activate Cartagena. Now once we're here, if we spend a tobacco, we can pull a token off. And we do indeed have a tobacco. So we can get rid of this card right here, and then we can pull this token off. And now instead of doing either of these two options, let's go up 3 plus 1, or 4 times on the exploration track. So we get to go one, two, three, four, and we have now crossed this threshold, and we're the first ones to do that, so we get four points, and we also get to pull another token off of our board. So let's take four points, which brings us up to 47, and then we can take this token off, because if we took the other one, then that would get us three points. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there's any way that we are actually going to be able to pull another one of these off. We're just one away from those extra points, and of course, the 10 points down here would be great, but there has to be six of these unlocks done already, and we did not get that far with the unlocks this game. Well, we've now finished out the delivery, and I think it's now time to complete our career card. We can pull this token back right here, and we have indeed crossed the third goalpost. So that means we are going to get four more points, bringing us from 47 up to 51, and we get four more money. And then in addition to that, we get two more points and two more money. So we're up to 53, we take two money right over here, and we can flip this over, and we are also an appointed admiral. Okay, let's now activate this city. That's going to get us two money, and then we can do a single village action, and that's definitely going to be purchasing a prestige building. So let's look up here to the options. This one is two points at the end of the game for every quest, and we currently have four quests, so that's eight points. This one right over here is going to be worth three points for every synergy token you have. We currently have two tokens, plus one for the crown, means we would be getting nine points for this one. Now this one over here would get us two points for every extra strength and worker we'd have at the end of the game, but currently it looks like that's going to be zero, so we do not want this one. And lastly, the Abbey will give four points for each goalpost we've crossed on the exploration track, and we have done all three, so that is worth 12 points. Now this is obviously the best for us, but I think it's very unlikely that any other players will go here, and the first player who does one of these prestige building buys gets two points. So I think what we should probably do is buy this Minister. So that means we have to spend one of our workers right over here. We can then take a crown from the synergy pool. And then after that, we also get two more points for being the first player to buy this prestige building. So we go up to 55 points total. And we, of course, have to spend 20 minus 1 or 19 of our money. And that's really no problem at this point because we've essentially been hoarding for these endgame victory point cards. Next up, we have received a crown, and if we look at the cards we've already built, it looks like this one right down here, that harbor, is going to give us two uh, victory point income for having that crown. So we'll go up to 12. All right, that's finished out our turn, and I just noticed that we have 30 money left over, and when we spend 18 of that to buy another prestige building, we will have 11 left over. So that means if we try to do two more card purchases, we can actually buy this aristocrat, which is five points for 11 money, and that would let us pull another token off, which would give us three more points. So our turn is over, but maybe we're going to try to squeeze another card purchase in before the game is over. Uh, either way, we now have to draw a new card. And none of these are particularly great for our situation, so we'll take one from the top, 
and that one is also not especially great for us, so we'll just add it into our hand. All right, the yellow player is up, and they are going to move two spaces and then do village actions. Well, if you remember, they have unlocked this spot on their board, so two spaces lets them do two village actions, and they have decided to do two card purchases. Well, after looking at their options, they've decided it's going to be these two cards here. Now remember, they have a discount of two from these master builders, so that means this pinnace costs 10 and this expedition costs them 18. So that is going to cost them 28 of their money total. And then, of course, they will have to spend two of their workers for this expedition. Now they can start taking the benefits of these cards. We can see the pinnace is going to give them two points for every compass they have. Well, they have one, two, three, four. They've had four for uh, much of the game, so that means this is worth eight points to them immediately. So they're going to go from 36 up to 44, and then they're going to get some income track bumps. Now the pinnace gives them four money income, and the expedition gives them two money income. So that is six extra all together, bringing them all the way over here. And then they get four victory point income if they have this synergy token and four more for that one. Now they happen to have exactly those two tokens, so this was a very good draw for them overall. So that means they get four plus four or eight more victory point income. So they go from 10 all the way up to 18. All right, that was a very potent turn for the yellow player, and now they've decided to start two more projects, and this means they have two spots open in their hand to draw two more cards at the end of their turn. Well, just like us, they're not too interested in any of these, so they're going to see if these are any good for them, and that's finished out their turn so the green player can go. Well, after considering their options, they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and stop over here at Camarco, and they are going to activate their assistant. Now, in order to do this, they are going to have to discard three identical goods, and they've had this in their hand for actually quite a while. So they can reveal this three tobacco in order to activate it, and now they're going to get five money and two village actions, and they've decided to buy two cards with those actions. So this five money is going to bring them up to 35, and then with the first village action, they are going to buy this Conquer Village card. Now that's going to cost them 15 minus one or 14. And then a couple of things are going to happen for them. The first is they are going to pick up a house synergy token. And then after that, they can place a single cube from one of the nation tracks down into an empty village. Well, they're pretty all in on England, so they're going to take this cube here and they'll put it down right over here. Next up, we can see that this Conquer Village is going to give them four victory point income if they have a medal, and they do, and two victory point income if they have the crown and they don't have that. So they can gain four victory point income, which will bring them up to eight. So that's finished one of their two village actions, and now they are going to make another card purchase. In this case, that is going to be this card here, which is a pinnace. Now that's going to cost nine minus one, so that's going to be eight money total. And then we can see that this will give them a decent amount of points. In this case, that's going to be two points for every synergy token they have, and they currently have four out of the five. So that is eight points right here, which will bring them from 39 up to 47. Now the last thing that happens is they will get two money income. So that brings them up to the 18 spot on the track. All right, their turn is done and they have no cards in their hand. So they do have to draw four and they don't really like the look of these over here. Uh, this Vice Admiral would have been great for them considering how many combat tokens they have, but they are already on location 19. So they would never actually get to use it. So they're just going to draw four random from the top of the deck. All right, it's now our turn, and I was originally planning at this point to just run all the way to the end and to be the first person to do that. Uh, if we did that, then we would be guaranteed these five victory points over everyone else. But at the end of my last turn, I realized we had a chance to get this uh, aristocrat played, which would give us five points, plus let us pull a token off, which would get us three more points. So that would be eight points overall. But then again, getting over here first would get us five points. And if we don't do that, then one of our opponents is guaranteed to get those five points instead. Now, I suppose if we did the slow plan, then we would effectively get eight points on one opponent and three points on the other. And I think, unfortunately, it's likely that the yellow player is going to be going up here on their next turn. And at the moment, I feel like they might be our biggest threat, although the green player does have a ton of points coming in from these nation tracks. So it's kind of hard to tell who is currently in the lead.
Well, with all of that considered, I think let's just go for the slow play and go one, two, three, four, five spots. And that means we are going to get two village actions. So let's come back over here and the prestige building we want to buy is going to cost 19 money. So that leaves us with 11 money left over and this will cost us 10. So that leaves us with just one money. This means there's no way to get multiple card purchases in with these two actions that we have. So I figure with the first action, let's just take a strength and then one extra money. And it's possible that that strength might really help us out that we'll likely be going into on our next turn. So that was one village action and the other one will be buying another prestige building. So this is going to obviously be the Abbey considering it's worth 12 points to us and we get two points immediately for being the first player to buy that prestige building. This means we're now up to 57 and we of course have to spend 19 money for this prestige building. Well, that's finished out this turn. We don't have anything to draw and we are set up to buy this aristocrat with the card buy action at the end of the round. This means it's now the yellow player's turn, and they are indeed going to jump right over here and be the ones to start the end game for this last round. Now we can see that they can get two exploration moves, or they can battle, and they've decided to go for combat. So in this case, it looks like if they fight for the nation that is weakest, they will get plus three combat. And currently, it looks like the English have one, two, three, four, five cubes out. The French have one, two, three, four, and the Spanish have one, two, three. So that means the Spanish have plus three. So if they fight for them, they have six combat plus a point. If they fight for the French, they get one French influence and two combat. And the English will give them four combat. Well, after considering these options, they are still going to fight for France. So that means they just have two combat. And they do have two of these workers that they could get rid of. But they want to keep one of these in order to buy a prestige building. So they're just going to go with the two combat. And they will activate this bottom track. That will let them put a single cube out into an empty village. And then, of course, they are going to get one influence for France. Now, this option right here also gives them an influence for France. So that's two influence total. Now, this is pretty great for them considering they go from eight up to ten. So they've gone past two noble ranks. They can take one cube. And unfortunately for them, that does not unlock a new spot over here for points. But now they're going to put this out and they'll put it into Martinique. There is one assistant there and it's not theirs. So they're going to get a single money for that. All right, that has finished out their combat, which means their turn is over. So it's now the green player's turn and they are forced to go right here since that's one step away. And they are not going to go up the exploration track. Instead, they are going to fight. So in this case, if they fight for the weakest nation, that will be plus three. And when we look out to the map... It looks like that is still going to be Spain with their three cubes. Uh, England has five, and it looks like France also has five. Now, when they look at these options here, that means if they fight for Spain, they'll have four plus three or seven combat. France will be three combat and a point, and England is two combat and two money. Well, it looks like they've decided to fight for Spain. So that means they have seven combat, and of course their two sailors will activate, giving them two strength. And now they're going to start things off by spending five of their combat just to gain two Spanish influence. So they'll go from zero up to two. So they've spent five out of their seven combat, which leaves them with two left over. And they're going to spend two of that in order to put a cube down into an empty village. So they'll take this one right here and add it into San Juan. And that did unlock another victory point spot. Now that effectively means they just gave the yellow player two more points and they gave us three more points. But that also gives them one more influence, which bumps them up to here. And that means they have just netted four more points for themselves, which is still more than they gave both of their opponents. So they can now come back here and they've used all seven combat on their tile. But now they're going to spend one strength in order to activate their commercial expedition. Now that's going to give them three money, which they can take right from the bank. And for the first time, they now do have this house synergy token. So that's going to give them two more victory points. So they go from 47 up to 49. All right, that has finished out their turn, which means it's now time for us to go. So let's sail from Camarco over here to the final spot. Now, once we are here, we can fight or we can do an exploration. Remember, we have plus one, so we can move three times on the track. And as you can see, that would actually give us four points. So we need to decide, are we likely to get more than four points if we do a combat action? 
Well, if we got even one influence in England, that would give us uh, four points, uh, maybe even more depending on where they're at. In fact, currently England is tied with France, so they're both uh, getting two points extra, and that means Spain is currently getting no extra points. Now, instead, if we were to put a cube out for Spain, then that would actually be a three-way tie. All three nations would have five cubes out here, which is kind of funny, and the tie is friendly. So that would actually add two victory points to the Spanish track, and we have a modifier of three. So that'd be three times two or six points. So I think combat is definitely the thing we should do. Both of those would be good options. So let's draw this tile here, and it will give us three extra combat if we fight for the weakest nation. And I think that is Spain. Uh, we can see England has one, two, three, four, five cubes. France has one, two, three, four, five, and Spain has four. So this worked out really well for us. In fact, if we fight for Spain, we get an extra point. So this was certainly the right call for us. So let's fight for Spain and take one point. We now have three combat plus three or six combat to spend. And in addition to that, we have one strength over here because we decided to go a little bit slow and that came from that additional village action that we didn't really have a use for. So effectively, we have seven strength overall. Now that is interesting because we could do a five and a two with it. And in fact, I think that is a great move for us. So let's spend this one strength. So we are now at seven. We will then spend five to gain two Spanish influence. And then this two will put a single Spanish cube down onto the board. Well, we can put the cube over here in La Sieba, and then we are going to get two influence for the five combat we spent, and then one more for that cube, which brings us all the way to that noble rank. So that was actually a huge turn overall. We made a lot more than four points there. So now the yellow player gets to go, and since this is the fourth and final round, they're going to head up here instead of going down there. Now this location gives them three points, and you'll notice that this means in the fourth round, if somebody had a ship out uh, in the uh, slower parts of the map, they would have two turns before the end of the round once somebody gets to the end, as opposed to the one turn from the previous round. All right, that is a very simple turn for yellow. After them, the green player gets to go, and they get three points, and then we get to go, and we also get three points, and then after that, the yellow player is going to head right here, that's going to give them five points, which brings them from 47 up to 52, and that has officially ended the round. So it's now time for all of us to buy a card, and we're not surprised to see yellow buy a prestige building. Now that's going to be the palace. That is going to give them a crown synergy token and two more points for being the first player to buy this uh, prestige building, and that's going to get them two points at the end of the game for every quest they have, and they currently have seven quests. So that is a 14-point prestige building, which is a bit intimidating. Well, the two points will tie them up with the green player at 54. And then this crown synergy token will activate uh, that right there. So that's going to give them two more victory point income. So they'll go from 18 up to 20. And as soon as your marker hits this spot, you need to immediately take uh, 20 points for as many scoring rounds as there are left in the game. So if this was the third round and we had two more uh, income scorings, then they would take 40 points to essentially account for those two scorings. In this case, there's just one. So they will take 20 points immediately. And then this will reset back to the zero on the track. So they will immediately go from 54 up to 74. Okay, it's now time for the green player to buy a card, and it's definitely going to be the pinnace. Now that's going to cost them 10 minus 1 or 9 of their money. And then they are going to immediately get 1 point for every combat token they have. Well, they've done a lot of combat this game. It looks like that is 8 tokens, so they will get 8 points for this, which brings them from 54 up to 62. After that, they'll get four money income bumps, so they go from 18 up to 22. All right, we are the last ones to buy a card, and that's going to be the Aristocrat. Now, we spend only 10 because we do have a single Master Builder over here. Uh, we easily can afford that. That's going to be worth five points to us at the end of the game, and we can pull one of our tokens off. So that's going to be this one here, which immediately gets us three points. So this will bring us from 58 up to 61. And it's now time for income. Now, as I mentioned back in the tutorial, the income for the money track over here is different in the fourth and final round of the game. Instead of taking money, which is worth nothing at the end of the game, you just take the highest amount of victory points that you have crossed with your token. So we are at the three point spot over here, and we are at 12 points for victory points over there. So that is going to be 15 points overall for us, which brings us from 61 up to 76. 
Next up, the green player is at the four point spot here and the eight point spot there, so they get 12 points total, which brings them from 62 up to 74. Lastly, we have the yellow player who is at the six point spot here and then the zero victory point spot over there because, of course, they already cashed out the 20 earlier. So they'll go from 74 up to 80. All right, it's now time to score our cards. Now, this is going to be the points on the cards we bought, including the points from the prestige buildings. I figure let's just start with those first, and we'll go from the left to the right. Now, it's worth stating that multiple players can buy these prestige buildings, but that did not happen this game. Now, the yellow player is going to get two points for every quest they have completed, and they did seven, so that is 14 points to them. Over here at the Minister, we will get three points for every Synergy token we have, and we have three, so we will get nine points for this. And lastly, at the Abbey, we will get four points for every one of the Exploration Thresholds we crossed, and that's three, so that means we get 12 points there. So, all told, we get 21 points, and Yellow gets 14. So we go from 76 up to 97, and the Yellow player goes from 80 up to 94. Next up, we add up all of the points on the cards that we bought throughout the game. So we can look over here, and we have 2, 7, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 points. So that takes us from 97 up to 119. Next up, the yellow player can add up their points. They have 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 17, 19, 21, 26 points. This means they're going to go from 94 up to 120. Lastly, there is the green player over here who got quite a few cards built. So that's going to be 2, 4, uh, 7, 11, 13, then 17, 19, and then 24. Well, this will take them from 74 up to 98. All right, it's now time to score influence. Now, first of all, the player farthest along each one of the three tracks gets three points, and it looks like uh, each one of us essentially chose a track. So all three players will get three points for being at the end of one of them. So that means yellow is at 123, we are at 122, and green is at 101. After that, it's time to score these noble ranks on the influence tracks, and before we can do that, we need to figure out which nation is strongest and which is second strongest. In order to do this, we just count up the number of cubes currently in the Caribbean. So the French have one, two, three, four, five cubes. The Spanish have one, two, three, four, five. And the English have one, two, three, four, five. So uh, surprisingly enough, everyone is tied. This means all three nations will have two more points put into their multiplier, which is kind of funny the way that worked out. Now that means we can start with France. They have one, two, three, four, five points over here. Uh, so that means the green player is going to get 2 times 5 or 10 points. We will get 2 times 5 or 10. And the yellow player will get 5 times 5 or 25 points. So green goes up to 111. We go up to 132. And then yellow goes up to 148. Next up, we can score Spain. Now they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points showing. So that means the green player gets 2 times 6 or 12 points. Yellow gets 2 times 6 or 12 points. And then we are going to get 5 times 6 or 30 points. So green will go up to 123. Yellow will go up to 160. And then we are going to go up to 162. Lastly, it's time to score England. Now they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 showing over here. And we get no points for that. The yellow player gets 3 times 6 or 18 points, which is certainly not something we want to see. And then the green player gets 6 times 6 or 36 points. So yellow goes up to 178. And green goes up to 159. With that, we have finished scoring all of these, and the last thing to do would be to look at the quest card if we were playing in the story mode, but there is nothing to happen over here, so that means we have the final endgame scores. So, Yellow had a pretty solid win with 177 points, we came in second with 162, and Green was close behind at 159, and that completes one full three-player game of Maracaibo. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. 
Overall, I think it did a good job of showing the different aspects to this game. I was certainly trying to have each player focus on something different to really highlight those parts. Obviously, we went quite hard on the exploration track, the yellow player went very hard on questing, and then the green player went very hard on the combat. They obviously got a couple sailors right at the beginning of the game, and they made a lot of strength which they were able to leverage to get a lot more influence. Now, obviously, there is a lot going on in this game, and once the dust settled, the yellow player won, and I think they uh, certainly played the game well. I think all of us did, uh, realistically. Like, while I was going through editing the video, it didn't seem like there were any turns where I was like, oh my gosh, why did I do this instead of that? But uh, it's very likely that there are things that we uh, certainly should have done instead of others that I just missed for one reason or another. Uh, there are a lot of ripple effects of small decisions, especially in that fourth round of the game, when you're starting to figure out uh, which of the nations is going to have the most cubes out on the board. Um, honestly, this is my fifth time playing, and that's the first time I've ever seen any ties at all between nations, let alone having a three-way tie. So uh, obviously, if things had gone a little bit different, then in particular, the green player maybe could have done better at really exploiting their overall influence lead, although the rest of us were really able to catch up quite a bit, uh, in large part because of that exploration track. Obviously, getting three bonus influence is a big deal for getting to that first goalpost. And then also, the yellow player got that um, extra action to bump them up to the next noble rank. So at the end of the game, even though the green player got tons of strength, the, uh, the rest of us were not that far behind them overall. And obviously, the green player did not end up getting into second place, although they were just a handful of points behind us. Um, now, I do want to emphasize that um, each time you play this game, you are definitely going to see a different mix of cards. I put a little note on screen during the tutorial about this, but uh, again, in that deck of cards, you have 56 of those dark bordered cards that are always in there, and then you take 40 cards out of another deck of 101, and you take them randomly and you shuffle them in. So every time you play, you're going to get a different mix of 40 cards out of the 101, which is definitely going to influence the different strategies and avenues that people have while they're playing through the game. Uh, I do also want to mention that this was obviously the standalone version of the game, and if you decide to play with the story mode, then you actually go through a sequential story which gives you decisions and new mechanics and um, new cards that you can add into the overall deck. So if you play with a story mode, there are actually more cards that are in in the uh, deck every single time you play. So uh, there is a lot to explore with that story mode uh, in addition to just playing the standalone game. And at this point, I think that's going to wrap up all my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.